What's up, my Yu-Gi-Oh bros? I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh in 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 credit production value. Um, so recently, uh, in fact, Monday, the round three of the next great YouTuber was announced, and since then, I've been seeing a lot of controversy around YouTube uh, surrounding the competition itself and surrounding some of the mechanics of the competition. I just wanted to take a few minutes so that I don't have to just kind of do this piecewise uh, in various video comments and Facebook groups uh, to just kind of give my thoughts about the competition and about this controversy. So first off, I won't, before I get to actually talking about it, I want to put it out there that I am extremely biased because A, I am getting a lot out of this competition. I am benefiting greatly from it. I have gotten a lot of publicity and a lot of subscribers, and I've gained a community, and I've had a lot of fun. So I've benefited greatly from this competition, which makes me a little bit biased in favor of it. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm not willing to take criticism, because, uh, because I want to make this competition better, and the only way to make something better is to acknowledge flaws in it, or possible flaws in it, and to acknowledge criticism. So I am I am not trying to blow off any critics of the, co of the contest, I just want to put out there that I have that bias. I also have a bias in that I am on the receiving end of a lot of the advantages that are making people uncomfortable. For instance, I have a greater subscriber count than other competitors in this competition. I've also been receiving a lot of endorsements from other YouTubers, and I've been receiving shoutouts and guest uploads and things like that. So I, am, I have a lot of advantages that other competitors uh, may feel uncomfortable with, and that is absolutely and totally valid. However, it also makes me biased on the subject of how the competition works. Now, um, I want to start off by talking about the controversy surrounding the, the competition itself. Now, I haven't seen as much of it, but it is out there, and um, I just I just want to take a look at it for a second. So the first piece of, um, of the first kind of complaint about this competition is that it is just a publicity stunt for the big name Yugi tubers to go look at us, look how cool we are, giving shout outs to the to some smaller Yugi tubers. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, to some degree that's that that's probably true. But 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 why do you care? Um, I am still getting a lot out of this competition. The smaller Yugi tubers are getting. Um, getting a lot out of this competition. They're getting publicity, they're getting fun, they're getting community. I don't see why it's a problem to people that big name Yugi tubers want to gain more publicity. They want to get more content and they want to look like better people and that's okay because we would all do that and we all want to get better content for our viewers to see and we all want to have a wider community. So the fact that this might be a bit of a publicity stunt, it may not even be true, but even if it is, why do you care? What what difference does it make to you? The other thing is that people are saying that it's like YouTube hazing, where it's like the big name YouTubers getting to watch us smaller dudes dance and and stuff like that. Uh, and once again, if that is true, I I'm still not certain what the problem is with it. Uh, because we choose to do this. It's not like you need to go through this contest to be a good Yugi tuber or to even get your name out there as a Yugi tuber. Um, there are plenty of of big Yugi tubers out there, or even just medium Yugi tubers, who didn't go through this competition and are still fairly well known. So we don't have to do this. This isn't a prerequisite for becoming a big name Yugi tuber. Um, and it's also a lot about fun. I think a lot of the people who are saying that this is that this is like Yugi Tube hazing or whatever are taking this competition a little bit too seriously. Um, for, it's easy for me to say, I suppose, that it's just about fun because I don't really necessarily need the publicity as much as smaller Yugi Tubers would. Um, but I've just been doing this for fun, and I've been doing it to gain community and and enjoy myself. So the fact that maybe yes, the the bigger names who are creating these rounds are having a good time creating challenges for us to jump through. That, that, that doesn't bother me at all. So that's just kind of my response to those particular complaints. Once again, I am not trying to blow off criticism, and if you guys have any other ideas that you want to talk about in the comment section below or questions for me, go ahead and do that. So the next thing, and probably the bigger complaint, has to do with the mechanics of the competition and this idea that the whole competition is just a popularity contest. Now, first off, 
I want to say that's not really true because a lot of the Yugi tubers who have done really well in the last round, who were very small names, I'm talking about like Sibo and Peabody and people like that who between them probably have under 1,200 subscribers but still got through to the next round of the next great YouTuber. And the reason is not because they gained popularity suddenly. Um, this is pr probably um, a, not true seeing as they didn't gain a massive number of subscribers over that time. The reason why they got through is because they had great content and people enjoyed their content. So this notion that the entire thing is a publicity contest uh, is, is, is just... It, it, it's not true. It is it is objectively not true. But the other thing is, to some degree, yes, even if it is a popularity contest, that's kind of okay. Uh, because the idea of popularity is that people like you, and people like your, con your content. Uh, and I realize that Ryan Nisker himself, the guy who people are complaining about in this round, uh, said this, and that um, it, it, it works out in his favor because he doesn't, maybe he doesn't want to look bad, but, but sure, why not? But like popularity, the reason why a person is popular is because people like their content. So if people want to see them get to the next round because they're popular, I think that's absolutely a-okay. Yeah, maybe his, maybe his video sucked this round. He acknowledged that. He apologized to his subscribers and he said that he would do ne better this time and maybe I'm naive, but I believe him. So I'm kind of okay with the fact that he made it through. Maybe I would have liked to have seen a, a better video, um, get more recognition, but I think that Ryan Nisker in general has really good content and a lot to offer to this competition. So I, am, I have no place in begrudging him for being popular. I also have no place in begrudging him for being popular because a lot of my success in this competition so far has been due to my popularity on YouTube. Um, so I think to some degree um, popularity being a factor is kind of okay, but I also think that even if it is a factor, it was only really a factor for the first round and maybe to some degree in the second round, but as the competition wears on, popularity is going to make less of a difference. The reason why I say that is because in the first round, the neutral viewers were spread kind of thin. There were a lot of entries, and probably most people didn't even watch them all, which meant that in order for a in order for a video to move on, it had to gain a certain amount of publicity, uh, and it had you, it had to have a reason for people to go to that video and watch it and hit the thumbs up button. To some degree, popularity had a lot to do with that. If you had subscribers, then you would, could get your subscribers to watch your video and hit the thumbs up button. If you could publicize your video on a Facebook group or something like that, then people were more likely to watch your video. So in the first round, yes, it definitely had a lot to do with with popularity, but in like the second round and now the third round, and even especially in the finals, popularity is going to have a lot less to do with it because the number of your supporters is going to steadily be outnumbered by the number of people who don't care who wins, who are just looking for a better, who are looking for the best piece of content. And the other thing is like a lot of people have been saying that the voting process is the problem that just having people hit the thumbs up button and having that be the determining factor uh, as to who gets through to the next round is the problem because people are biased so they're more likely to vote for a YouTuber they, they like in general instead of good content and um, so far I haven't seen any better ideas um, for instance I saw, I saw one person say that um, maybe we should have the big name YouTubers have have a vote that that has some significant like greater significance than the average viewer I guess but you'd have to find an objective measurement for who the big name YouTubers are uh, and also how do you know that they're not going to be biased as well they're human too so I think that the voting process so far as I've seen is the best mechanic for the competition but yes there are flaws to it in that you do need a certain amount of popularity to get to get through the first round um, there are probably other flaws that I'm not thinking about it may be a valid complaint that the 1500 subscriber mark is too high maybe uh, people think that you should have under a thousand subscribers to get into this competition there are tons of valid complaints that people could have and pieces of constructive criticism and new ideas, and I'd really like to hear them. So if you have any of the, those ideas, hit me up in the comment section below. Meanwhile, I got a jet. See you guys.